What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. Last time, uh, Kyle was fired from his job and he came into the hotel and we spoke to a couple of the tenants here, as well as the landlady. So not a whole lot got done, but here we are. Uh, I don't... Maybe there's something I have to do in notes? Oh, I'm supposed to write something. Shoot, what was I supposed to write at the end of the last video? Um... Did I do it? She's right, I suppose. It's about time I bit the bullet and checked my mailbox. See, that's the freaking thing I've been trying to get you to do now. Forever ago. Just check it! Two oh two is his, I believe. These mailboxes are for the tenants on the second floor. Yes, that's you, is it not? Fourth floor, they're just sitting there all neglected. The mailboxes are covered up with tape. These mailboxes are for the third floor residents. Come on! As expected, it's full of mail. Suppose I'd better take a look at some of it. Damn, can't remember the combination. Think I got it written down though. No, exactly, sure, but. Okay. Seven. Seven one. Why is it left left right should be alternating what? Okay Seven You know what? I'm gonna go do it my way screw this seven Seven One all right now. I'm gonna try it their way, which seems totally stupid. Ah Shoot hold on that restart Seven Seven. One. <sighs> Seven. Seven. One. I can't open it without the combination. Yeah, well, despite that, it doesn't make sense. Oh my god, am I not going to get past this first puzzle because it doesn't make any sense? Seven, seven, one. Are you telling me... What? Is that, is it not the number? Doesn't make sense, okay. Seven. Seven. Okay. Whoo, boy. I thought that was it. That's how I look at all my problems. Ugh. Been a long time since I saw this much mail jammed in there. Well, you know what? I feel the same way every time I open my mailbox. Why? Because the U.S. Post Office sticks spam mail in there with it. It's 80% garbage. It's coupons. I don't want that shit. That's why my mailbox is always full. If they didn't put that in there, my mailbox wouldn't be full for two years. Because I get one letter a month. But with that spam stuff they put in every week, I... Oh, mm. Ranting about the USPS. Now to find the one from Mags. Here we are. Pick up the eviction notice from among the mail. The eviction notice reads, My dear tenants, after much deliberation, I have chosen to sell this property. The new owner plans to have the building demolished, so it is my unfortunate duty to inform you of the need to vacate at your earliest convenience. 
Further information will be posted on the notice board in the coming days. According to the date, this thing arrived about a week ago. There's a small white envelope lying on the floor. I thought so. It's from the credit card company. They want me to sign up for more plastic. There's a flyer of some sort lying on the floor. What is this? Looks like it might not be entirely useless. I stash the flyer between the other letters. I pick up the mound of mail and put it in my case. Useful information. Message text, fast forward, quick lock, message log. Okay, so I'm in the second floor. Oh, someone's coming down the stairs. Who's there? What's this guy doing with the hammer? Better shoot him. Hey, you. Wawa. What are you doing there? Me? What am I? I was just wandering around and thinking a few things through. Thinking? You serious? You don't think? Is that a crime now? I suppose the hammer helps you concentrate, right? You want to tell me what you're really up to? No. Why don't you mind your own business, Kyle? I use this to fix the place up. That's right. I was checking the hallways and doors, making sure it's all ship shape. Dylan! I was about to say Dylan! This guy goes by the name Dylon Fitchar. Lives in room 304. He's a plumber and a general handyman. Got a glum look about him. Wouldn't make a very good clown at a kid's party. How come you get lumped with the building repairs? Dunno, Mrs. Patrice asked if I wouldn't mind. Mrs. Patrice? Yeah. She must have noticed I got all the tools already. Got a hammer, a spanner, everything I need to fix the plumbing. So that's why she asked you. Must be a convenient to have a free handyman. You're the only one who's ever quizzed me like this. Yeah, well, can't be too careful. Why are you even fixing the place up anyway? It's gonna be torn down, right? Sounds like a big fat waste of time to me. Mrs. Patrice was very clear. She told me to keep the place in good order. Right up until the last day when the deeds change hands. Interesting. Anyway, I gotta rush. Dylon takes off. Dylon Feetchar. That's what I'm gonna call him. This stress bus be getting to me. That's not how we talk. Nearly went up to the third floor without thinking. Gotta at least remember I live in 202, not 302. To be fair, I, I used to do that a lot in my old apartments. Just walk up to the wrong floor. 202. It just has to be the one all the way at the end of the hall. Hello, knocking on my own door. Knocking's no good if there's nobody home. What am I doing waiting for me to let myself in? I'm wasting my time here. Better just head in. No wonder he got fired. He can't even open. Doesn't know how to do anything. Use your can claw to open the door. Looks like it's locked. Use. On the door. Handle. I use my key to unlock the door. Something jammed to the door catches my eyes. It falls to the ground. Looks like my mailbox was so full, people are just sticking it in the door. I pick it up and take a look. What the hell is this? No name, nothing. Love letter? Looks like I got me an anonymous letter. I take the anonymous letter and enter the room. Thank you. 
Gotta be out of this place within the month. Didn't see that one coming, did you, Kyle? Well, this place has a lot more personality than the old... Oh. I placed my suitcase on the table next to the wall. My trusty case has certainly seen its fair share of action. Feels like I've been dragging the thing around all my life. Inherited it from my old man after he died. Started putting it to good use after quitting the force and working for Ed. Since then, we've pretty much gone everywhere together. I dropped my jacket on the sofa. Oh, right. I should take another look at that letter. I open the envelope and unfold the note. Inside, I find a typed letter reading. Item, locate the Scarlet Star, which disappeared at Hotel Cape West 25 years ago. An order? What kind of order is this? Getting an order directly from a client never happens. This has got to be some sort of joke. I put the table, I put the letter on the table. That the phone? Uh, do you think? The ringing suddenly stops. That's weird. The lamp on the answer phone is flashing. Um, where... Oh, I can do this. There's an answer phone hooked up. Makes me feel less guilty about ignoring calls. The first thing I hear on the tape is a young woman's voice. Hey Kyle, it's me. Looks like you're not home yet. Voice of a nightingale. That's our Rachel. You really pushed that off the deep end this time. What are you gonna do? Don't get blind drunk and do something stupid, okay? I'll call again in the morning. Damn. Looks like Ed wasn't just letting off steam this time. Looks like there's another message. I hear the voice of a man I don't recognize. Kyle Heil. Kyle Heil. Who the hell is that? I have an order for you. The request has been taken directly to your room. What did he say? The request was brought to my room. At least there's no doubt about where that letter came from now. I knew there was something not quite right about that letter. I better take another look. Uh, where is it? This is not where I'm supposed to be. I pushed it again. Hold on. All right. The letter could be in my bag. Nope. All right. It's probably over here. I reread the letter I found jammed at the door. Item locate the Scarlet Star. Which is here. Blah, 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 blah. So first I need to find out what this Scarlet Star is. Actually, come to think of it, is this even a genuine order? Well, one thing's for sure. This was a hotel 13 years ago. But why is something from that long ago appearing on an order? Moreover, what the hell is a Scarlet Star? As the night drags on, the fatigue drags me to my bed. Not exactly a sound night's rest. Can't recall how many times I woke up. Just can't seem to fall into one of those deep slumbers. Four years ago, after quitting the force and leaving Manhattan, I ended up working for Ed. 
He knew all about my past, but still gave me work. Ed introduced me to the world of locating things that didn't want to be found. This special service isn't publicized, but it's proved to be quite a flourishing business. But now Ed's canned me, and it's all come to an end. Then this. Why such a bizarre order make its way directly to me? These kinds of things normally go through Ed first. Does this mean that this little side business isn't as secret as he thinks? Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain why I've been roped into this. I realize I'm not going to get to sleep and stop trying. I slip out of bed, head to the window, and open the blinds. As I lean on the glass, I take in the view that stretches out before me. I should be looking right at the old LA night. I know so well. But tonight, something feels slightly different. As I idly stare through the glass at what's beyond, my mind wanders back to the day's events. It's December 18th, 1980. Ed gave me my marching orders and I dragged myself home. There was someone waiting in the lobby when I got there. That's why I ran into... Tony! I met Tony right after I got in the door. He was the one who dropped the bombshell about these apartments closing. After Tony and I went our separate ways, I got into a conversation with Mags. Curiosity got the better of me, and I asked why she decided to sell the place. The reason she gave was... She had her own reasons. Mags is feeling the strain of running this place alone and decided to sell. She also mentioned another reason for selling, but won't elaborate. After that, I checked my mailbox and agreed and went up to my room. I opened the door just like any other night. Just like any other night, I knocked on the door, then tried to open it, but I realized it was locked, and then I used the key to open the door. There were a couple messages waiting for me on my answer phone. The second one caught my attention. It was... The voice I heard wasn't one I recognized. He told me that he'd left me in order to locate something for him. I'd normally get this kind of thing from Ed, but this thing came to me directly. It didn't exactly instill the most positive of feelings inside. I waited in my apartment, mulling over what my next step was. But I had an uneasy feeling and couldn't seem to shake it. At that point, I didn't have any clue about the bigger picture. The Scarlet Star, something lost at Hotel Cape West some 25 years ago. Why did that order sheet come directly to me? And how does this all connect to the past? I'm worried this search might set me on a path to something I might not want to know. Chapter 2! Ring Picture The alarm in my cramped apartment starts to beep. Oh, come on! Can't you let me get just a little more shut-eye? Every morning I have to fight the temptation to get a gun and shoot the damn thing. Guess the only way to stop that damn beeping is to get up and hit it myself. Okay, okay, I get it. I lift my weary head from my pillow and open my tired eyes. On the table beside my bed is that damn alarm clock. Tammy, I'm recording right now. I can't play with you. Mm. Cutie. Push it! Come on, hide, focus.
Eight o'clock already. If I still had my job, this would be my cue to get up. Guess I don't need to worry about that kind of thing anymore, though. I throw my head back down on the pillow and fall back and fall asleep again. Great. Now the phone's ringing. I reach out from my bed and grab the receiver. Yeah. From your voice, it sounds like you're still in bed. Who's this? Dad? It's me, Kyle. Oh, Kyle, you don't remember your mother's voice after only half a year? Wow, I was so close. Mom? So it's my mom, Jeannie. She had a tough time after my old man passed away. Had to raise me on her own. Now she lives by herself in New Jersey, working as a nurse. If you don't drag yourself out of bed soon, you'll be late for work, you know. I'm taking today off. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have saved this call for another time and let you rest. Don't sweat it. I was planning on getting up around now anyway. But why are you calling me this early? Is something up? Well, there is. It's been on my mind since last night. I got a call from someone calling himself Rex Foster. Rex Foster? He said he wanted to ask me a couple of questions. He was keen to know if I was the mother of Kyle Hyde, the ex-New York detective. When I told him I was, he continued with something that caught me off guard. He asked whether you were still searching for Brian Bradley or not. What did you tell him? I said I didn't know. That's all he wanted to know. In fact, once I answered his question, he hung up. I need to know, though. Are you still looking for Bradley, Kyle? That's ancient history, Mom. I'm done looking for Bradley. Brian or Bradley? My partner from back when I was a cop in New York. Four years ago, he was working at a cover, and it turned out he was on the take. He was a good friend after I put a bullet in him, I quit the force. He was a great friend. I shot him. Moving on. That's probably for the best. Yeah, maybe. Who is this Rex Foster, anyway? Can't say the name rings a bell. And Mom. If you get any more calls from strangers asking you questions... I know what you're gonna say, but I thought he might be a friend of yours. He's not. I told you I don't know the guy. I don't know anybody who'd call my mom to snoop around for info. Okay, I understand. Glad to hear it. Anyway, I gotta go, Mom. Kyle, wait! What? How are things with Ed? Yeah, how about that? Ed, boss of Red Crown, he and my old man were buddies in a sense. They both drank at the same bar and they got to talking a lot. It's been 25 years since the incident in the downtown parking lot, when an officer on patrol came across my dad's body. It was Ed, a member of the Los Angeles police force at the time, that found him. When you said to me you were going to work for Ed, Kyle, I couldn't work it out. You're just not the salesman type. I worry about you even now. I'm your mother. It's in the job description. Look, Ma. I'm 34 years old. I think it's about time you eased up on the worrying a bit. You're probably right. It's just, you're the same age your father was when he died. No, you're right. I worry too much. I'll let you go now, Kyle. Have a nice day off and look after yourself. I was wide awake after the chat I had with my mom. Gave up trying to go back to sleep and dragged myself out of bed. Guess I was still in work mode. No late sleeping for me. I make my way to the sink and turn on the tap. I splash cold water over my face, giving my senses a sharp wake-up call. Feeling a lot more alert, I pull out some clothes and get dressed. I still feel that strange lack of focus and can't quite get my head together. There isn't anything I feel like doing right now. Before I know it, I find myself slumped on the sofa. I slowly begin to gain a little clarity as I sit there, but... There's something about hearing my mom's voice after all this time. That and the fact that I'm blankly staring at the worn-out wallpaper in my room. 
sends me plunging back through my thoughts to a point somewhere in the past. I start reminiscing about Los Angeles, the place I was born and raised. Then about my dad, Chris Hyde. He was a man with little to say, so went to his work that he was rarely home. My mom was working as a nurse back then, too. I'd come home from school each day, only to be greeted by an empty apartment. I was nine years old when my dad died. Three days after, he left for a job. He wound up dead in a parking lot somewhere downtown. I recall mom crying for a solid week after it happened. After she managed to get her feelings together, she packed our stuff. Then took us off to start a new life in Manhattan. I don't know how she could afford that, but okay. Why did my dad have to die like that? Who wanted him dead and why did he have to leave town? Was it Fuhrer or Bradley? I had all these questions going round in my head, but mom wasn't talking. So I had to interrogate her. Seven years into our new life in Manhattan when I was 16 years old, Mom decided to start talking to me about Dad. She chose this time to reveal something I didn't know. She told me that he used to be a safe cracker. He'd reached the point where he wanted to wash his hands of it. But after he left home to do his last job, he never returned. His death was unexplained and the case remains unsolved to this day. Six short, short, six short years from then, I became a detective. I still remember the words my mom said to me that day on my, about my old man. She said that now that I'm a detective, I can uncover the truth behind his death. I took her words lightly. After all, I knew about being in this line of work. I knew that getting to the bottom of the mystery surrounding a man's death could lead to truths that relatives of the deceased wouldn't want to hear. Even with the tools I had at my disposal, I wasn't willing to dig. I quit the job and still don't know the truth. I return from my trance-like state, draw a long breath, and stand up from the sofa. Just me and my thoughts. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been 27 and a half minutes, so I'd like to end this video here and pick this up again next time. So, stay tuned. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye!